Hello, everybody, and welcome to the GSMA Innovation Fund webinar for applications to our new innovation fund for the mobile internet adoption and for digital inclusion on today, the 22nd of April. Thank you for joining our call. If we move to the next slide, I'll take you through the agenda. So in today's session, we'll be covering a number of topics, uh, firstly, giving an overview of the current mobile internet connectivity position around the world. We will then talk about the uh, GSMA Innovation Fund, the objectives and the scope. We will focus around the digital uh, barriers to adoption and, and what, what the fund will be outlining as uh, overcoming those barriers. We will then hand over to my colleagues in the Innovation Fund team to talk about the criteria for your application, what's involved in the application process, including the key dates. We will then talk about the funding that's going to be made available to you if you're successful, as well as other support available to the winners. We will then hand over to our colleagues in the fund manager who will be joining us uh, on the webinar today, and they will take you through a live demonstration of the application portal. And then we'll close with some questions at the end and a final reminder of the next steps. The questions we would ask that you pose in the actual questions box, not in the chat box, and we will try and vet those and answer them on the, on the webinar um, either today or we will capture them and come back to you individually by email and we will post these in an FAQ section as well. So if we move to the next slide. Today the mobile internet is connecting people to new opportunities and life enhancing services. It's driving both economic growth and advancing progress towards the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. For most of the world's population, mobile is still the primary way and only way to access the Internet. The mobile industry connects today over 3.5 billion people to the Internet around the world. The percentage of people living outside of a broadband network has more than halved since 2014. The massive progress has been made. And now more people live within uh, network coverage as a result. The reach of mobile networks has expanded significantly in recent years. However, there is and there is a, a coverage gap still remaining of around 750 million people that are living without access to mobile internet, and 95% of those are living in low and middle income countries. However, there still remains a significant usage gap, which is growing. As networks expand, the adoption rate of using those services has not moved in line with that. And today, over 3.3 billion people are still living in areas that are covered by mobile broadband networks but are not using the services that this provides. And this indicates that while coverage is a necessary criteria, it alone cannot um, overcome the, uh, the main problem of digital inclusion. The unconnected populations are predominantly located in developing world markets. And you'll see in the last two bar graphs, uh, the, the, um, the, the adoption gap or the, um, the usage gap is still remains biggest in Asia and Africa. And it does focus typically on those in low incomes who have late, lack of basic skills and lack of, lack of basic digital literacy. So addressing both coverage and usage is significant to progress. We move to the next slide. So to that effect, the Innovation Fund for Connectivity was, was, uh, was put together. Uh, considerable effort still needs to be made in increasing digital inclusion, and this fund will provide local innovators with the opportunity to create and scale relevant solutions that tackle key barriers to mobile internet adoption and usage. It's aimed at supporting innovations that increase mobile internet adoption and usage for the underserved, for those who are currently not able to use mobile internet services, including women. The fund is open to applicants delivering impact in both Africa and Asia regions, and we are looking for startups or small to medium sized enterprises that are willing and able to work with mobile operators in these regions on projects which will advance the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals related to digital inclusion. Funding will be provided uh, in, in grant sizes up to £250,000, uh, will be made, made available between £100,000 and £250,000. And this fund will either support an innovation, the innovation of a new product, a service or a business model on the expand, or the expansion of an existing product or service to reach groups who are currently digitally excluded within existing or new markets. So the total fund value is 2.5 million. As I said, the ticket size or the grant allocation will be between 100 and 250,000 uh, pounds. These will be awarded either for an innovation of a new product, service or business model or an expansion into a new market. And move to the next slide.
Funded projects will focus on innovations that overcome a number of barriers to mobile internet adoption. And these include accessibility, affordability, digital skills, safety and security. And we will look to demonstrate the commercial sustainability of these models that can be scaled and replicated in similar environments. For accessibility, uh, we're looking for innovations that improve the accessibility or usage of mobile internet services and the usability of those services for citizens who are unable to access them today. This will not, however, include uh, promoting access to electricity or to formal identification. On affordability, the innovations uh, that will be looked for will be those that improve affordability amongst those, those same users um, and accessing those mobile internet services and devices for citizens who currently cannot access them today uh, due to a barrier of uh, affordability. It should be noted here that uh, we will not be focusing on, on affordability to fund either the subsidy of devices or for the manufacturing or importation of devices to drive lower uh, prices in the market. This is something that's out of scope for this particular fund. On digital skills, we're looking for innovations that focus improving the basic digital skills of users and to build their confidence in accessing and the use of the mobile internet. These proposals can be complementary to services and toolkits such as that that's been designed by the GSMA with our MIST toolkit, uh, or, or a completely new approach for delivering skills to a first time user. And finally, the last topic, um, that we were looking in the criteria is around safety and security. So here we're looking for innovations that focus on improving the safety and security of those who want to use the mobile internet and are using the mobile internet. But we will not be allowed, we will not be focusing on um, issues that relate to data privacy, as that has a heavy focus on local regulation and policy, or on fraud, as this is covered by other parts of the uh, mobile for development program. So if we move to the next slide, we'll talk about the eligibility um, of what's um, of what, we, what the eligibility criteria is for the for the applicants. So we've listed these here, and it should be noted that there is a terms and conditions document that's available to download on the URL for our for our host hosting website. We'll share these details later, but we're just to recap on those on those key criteria. So the first criteria is that you must ensure that you ha currently have active users and proven uh, revenues in at least one eligible low to middle income market, and those countries are listed. On the terms and conditions document that you can download and, and, and review at your at your own time. You would also need to be um, showing how you you plan to use mobile technology as a strategic driver for your proposition and ultimately this this proposition must be driving mobile internet usage. It's not about driving um, through other technologies such as Wi-Fi or using laptops. It must be focused on mobile internet technology. You should also Prove that you have the potential and the appetite to form strategic partnerships with mobile operators. This can be either through existing partnerships, discussions, or examples of where you or your team have, um, have had success in this space before. But working with mobile operators and taking your product to market and scaling it is seen as key in, in the criteria. You should also have a clear and measurable socioeconomic impact of your proposal. In particular, we are looking, as I said before, low income citizens, rural populations, women, and youth or others that are, that are seen as a bottom of social pyramid and those that are currently being left behind. Those must be the focus uh, groups for your product and your proposition. You must also demonstrate to us how you will advance the social uh, development goals of the United Nations. These are, again, uh, in the public domain, and you can access them through uh, GSMA sites. And we can make a link of that available to you um, um, within the hosted page on our, um, our learning page. You must also be registered or, or able to be registered in the operating country for where you wish to do the project's implementation. Um, this must be part of your proposal that you know as an organization you would not be barred from registering there for any various reasons, and that you'd be willing to set up a business entity um, if you were to be chosen as a successful applicant. And this is, must be the country where you would receive the grant money. Um, you may not be operating with your headquarters in that country, but you must show a clear implementation plan, either uh, examples of being registered there already or the ability to be registered there. And of course, once as part of the ability to be uh, operational in that country, you must be compliant with all the local relevant business licensing, taxation, employee law, or any other relevant regulation that would be required for you to operate in that specific country of operation. We also insist that you are compliant with all the applicable laws, including upholding and adhering to the fundamental human rights around the UK Modern Slavery Act, Gender Equality Act, child protection policies, and all international labor standards. And finally, which we'll come on to in, a, in the following slides with my colleague Nafisa, you must prove that you have 50% match funding available to the total grant uh, um, 
grant value that you are applying for. And we'll come on to that in the coming slides. So with that, I'll hand over to my colleague, Nafisa, who's going to take you through the application process in terms of timeline, key dates, and what is uh, entailed within the, the, the grants and, and the support that we can give to you. So Nafisa, over to you. Thanks very much, John. Um, so in terms of the application process, we're currently at the pitch stage submission. So we're at step one. Um, so applications open on the 15th of April and um, the submission deadline is May 22nd, after which point we'll be shortlisting applications. Um, so please note that all applicants will be notified in the month of June, whether their applications have been successful or not, and we'll move to the next stage. Successful applicants in step three will be invited to submit their proposal applications, including further details of their solution, implementation country, um, and other criteria. In um, step three and step four will overlap in terms of timing, meaning that some due diligence activities will occur while reviewing proposals. In September, um, which is at month five, or step five rather, um, it is expected that our fund panel, our, our independent fund panel, will review proposals and a decision will be made at that point on which applicants will be awarded grant funding. The fund panel is expected to select between 15 and 20 grantees for this round of funding. In step six, our teams will work closely with the selected grantees to finalize on contracting, the scoping of milestones and timelines. And then finally, in step seven, um, around December, projects are expected to begin. And while I have quoted these dates, please note that, um, that these dates are provisional and may change just due to the circumstances that we're in at the moment. If we move on to the next slide, we'll go into the type of funding and support that, that is available or will be available to uh, the winners. Um, so as John mentioned, the grant funding is between 100,000 and 250,000 um, pounds. Part of the support that will be provided to the winners includes mentoring on the use of mobile technology, including expert advice within the GSMA, but also with potential external organizations as well. We also look forward to bringing grantees together either physically or virtually to share rel relevant insights and best practices on how to overcome the barriers preventing the unconnected from adopting and using mobile internet, including specific expertise on um, women and rural populations. And we also look forward to helping build a network and connections within gra the grantee cohort so that the grantees can support one another as you may face common challenges. If we want to move on to step, uh, slide nine, the boot camps um, that our that grantees will also be have available to them will not just include targeted networking, but also regular offline clinics, including sessions on improving on improvements to your product or service through, for instance, supporting human-centered design or usability testing led by subject matter experts. Um, we also look forward to the opportunity to increase your visibility and raise your, the profile of your organization to potential investors and partners through profiling in our publications, through social media, and also participation at some of our flagship events, including Mobile World Congress, which is held annually in Barcelona, and through our M360 regional series of events as well. If we could move to the next slide. So during the application process, 
the GSMA and the fund manager, Palladium, will offer support in the following ways. We will answer questions about the application program process at the end of this web webinar or uh, via email, as John mentioned earlier. We will also host information such sessions such as today's on the application process to support you in completing your application and providing vi visibility on next steps. And we will also do a limited review of your submission on a reactive basis via calls or email. If we could move to the next slide. On, um, in terms of what we will not be able to offer you, um, this includes, we will not unfortunately be able to support you in the design of your proposed projects or um, allow direct engagement with potential m and partners for guidance, support, or feedback. We will not be fostering or confirming partnerships or matching con contribution on applicants' behalf, and we will not be able to provide any analysis or needs assessment or research. If we move over to the next slide, um, before I, I hand over to, to Matt, um, I wanted to I wanted to also let you know that. Um, the GSMA is working with Palladium, who is our fund manager working on behalf of the GSMA Mobile for Development Foundation. Palladium will be doing a walkthrough of the application process now through Screen Door. Um, if you could just bear with us for a moment or so, as this is a live demo, the application platform. So, Matt, over to you whenever, whenever you're ready. Thank you, Nafisa. Um, so yeah, Nafisa has introduced me as uh, working for Palladium. Um, we've come on board to, uh, to provide a fund management support service for the GSMA Innovation Fund. Um, one of the key components of this has been to work closely with the GSMA team to ensure that um, the application process is as fair, transparent, consistent, and accessible as possible, um, and aligns with the best practice that GSMA expects and uh, the donors to the fund expect. Um, so to this end, I'm just going to give you a quick run through of the application portal and have a look at the application form, um, albeit not in too much detail. So the page that everyone can hopefully see uh, is the landing page for the application portal. You get here via the GSMA Innovation Fund web page, and we can share that URL with you. Um, so after you've clicked the Apply Now button, you're brought here. Before we go into the uh, application form itself, I just want to scroll down and highlight a couple of key things. So on the right-hand side, you'll see the submissions deadline, May the 22nd. All submissions have to be in by this date. A little bit further down, you'll see questions about the fund. Um, and there's an email address here. So if you have any questions about the fund or the application itself, um, they can be sent to this email address. But do note there is a deadline for sending in questions, which is the 3rd of May. and after that, we will take all the questions submitted and all the answers we've provided, um, anonymize them and compile them into a frequently asked questions document, which will then be published on this website by May the 8th. Okay, and now on the left-hand side, at the bottom of the application portal, you'll see there is a couple of files that you can download. The bottom file, is a offline version of the questionnaire, so the questions in the application form. Uh, you're welcome to download this and use this to prepare, but applications should be submitted through the online form, which I'll show you in a moment. 
The other file here is the terms and conditions that John mentioned. Uh, before you start your application form, I can't stress enough how important it is to download this. It contains, as John showed in one of the previous slides, the eligibility criteria for applications, um, but it also contains um, details about the objective of the fund and the objective of this funding round. Um, and everything that the, uh, the, tech, the reviewers looking at your applications will consider when, um, when evaluating them. And just to that end, your pitch application will go through an eligibility review. So we will ensure that uh, your submission is eligible based on the criteria in the terms and conditions. And then it will go through a technical evaluation, which will allow us to identify the most promising uh, patients based on the information set out in the terms and conditions. Okay, so the application form itself, um, you can see the big grey button here which says resume draft. Uh, this is because I have uh, already started a draft to make sure I know what I'm talking about. Um, but for anyone new to the portal, it will say start new draft, which is also available here, which I will click on. Hopefully you can now see what the form itself looks like. Um, I won't go through each section in detail um, and eat up everyone's time. But we've landed on the first page, which is profile and eligibility. Um, key thing to draw out here is that we have tried to front load the eligibility questions as much as possible so that you're not uh, wasting your time putting together an application if you don't meet the eligibility criteria. A good example of this, if I just scroll down, is question 1.4. If I click yes here, it opens up the rest of the application form to me. If I were to click no, it closes off the application form to me. And then if I were to click next page, it would take me to a page telling me that unfortunately my application is ineligible. Um, and this is one of the eligibility criteria that John was talking about. If I'll click yes, just so I can proceed. So, if you've started working on your application form and you want to jump to a section rather than having to click through each, you can click the little drop-down arrow there and see all the pages. Now, just to, without going through them all, the way it's structured is it gives applicants an ability to talk about their organizational vision and strategy, as well as their track record. It gives applicants the ability to set out the strength of their um, leadership and management teams, and also the extent to which their um, addressing gender balance and looking to develop local talent. It focuses on um, down financial management and whether or not you are already managing funds from investors, lenders, or other relevant donors. It gives you the opportunity to set out the strength of your project, how unique it is, whether it has the ability to scale, It um, goes into a bit of detail for you to set out your match funding as well. So where is it from uh, and selling how it, add, how it adds value. We also, there's also a section where you will be expected to talk about your strategic partnerships, um, specifically with mobile network operators, um, but also talking about your other project partners, so that could be shareholders, other funders, or key suppliers. Um, there's information, there's questions which will ask you to draw out um, key risks to the project, um, so that we are aware and so that um, we have confidence that you are aware and managing your risks. 
There's a section that lets you build on the uniqueness of your project, so convince us that um, you are plugging a market gap rather than just entering a crowded field. And then the final sections relate to you demonstrating that your, uh, your solution is inclusive, that the aim is to reach everybody, um, but specifically women and disabled people, and that your solution has the ability to scale. And then the final section, section 12, which I will click on, is the potential for social impact. So this is where you describe to us the impact of your solution, as well as the sustainable development goals that your solution is or is expecting to contribute to. This is also a good section just to stress again, make sure you have the terms and conditions, the term sheet in front of you uh, when you're completing this. Tailor your responses to the information uh, set out in there. That is what the technical reviewers will be looking for. Um, and follow any advice that is given on the specific page in the application form. So this bolded text here pulls out from an eligibility criteria. Examples are given for the sort of information that uh, we are looking for in the answers. And when there's a link, I won't click on it now, but do click on it, follow it, familiarize yourself with the information there if, if you are not already familiar and use it to provide the best answer you can. So the 13th page is just for additional material. It gives you the opportunity to attach your pitch deck in case there's any information you feel you couldn't bring out in the form. And if you have a video about your organization or the project, there's a you can copy and paste a URL to it there. This information will obviously help us understand um, what you're presenting in the rest of the application form, but in itself won't specifically be marked. So if you don't have a, a fancy video, that won't detract from um, the marking of your answers further back in the form. Finally, you can click preview. Uh, because I've not filled anything in, this will tell me that I have there's errors and I need to go back and fill information in. If you had properly completed your form, it would take you to a preview where you could then submit. Okay, I hope this is helpful. Um, as I said earlier, there was that email address. You can email any questions about the form or the process to that before the 3rd of May. Um, and we'll endeavor to answer them as, as sort of comprehensively as possible. Uh, but for now, uh, back to you, John. But this slide is really just a reminder on the timeline. Um, timeline is obviously critical in any application process. So the key dates that uh, you need to take away from today is getting your application submitted by uh, 22nd of May. And the exact time and time zone is published on the website there. We will not be able to go over that. Uh, the screen door application software will be switched off and uh, we will not be receiving uh, applications beyond that point. Um, a step two, as Nafisa took you through earlier, we'll be doing a review of the shortlisting. Uh, we do expect to get a high level of applicants, so we're really excited and, and the number of people dialed in today is, is a reflection of that. But as you can imagine, it will take some time for us to review. And by, by early June, we'll be able to, to uh, confirm if your first stage su submission was successful. And at that stage, we will ask you to enter the proposal stage. So through that, uh, from your timeline, the, the dates to be mindful are that um, your resources and, and team should be in place to, to start working on that from mid-June. And we will then be uh, allowing a, a submission date, which will be published again. Um, we're not showing it just now. Uh, we'll go through the review and due diligence, and this will build towards the final pitch stage presentations uh, that we'll be sharing in September with an independent um, award panel. And that panel will be made up of a cross-section of industry experts, both from um, from the development side and from uh, private sector, from operators, and from experts in the various barriers that we've identified. Uh, step six will be, uh, if you're successful and you are nominated, we'll go into contracting stage. And step seven is when we'll do the uh, final um, awards of the grants and announce you as winners. And that's when the project will officially begin for deployment. So if I move on to the next slide.
So this is a, a final reminder. What are the key next steps for you as an applicant? Um, as I said, the deadline for submission is going to be May the 22nd. Um, this is a this is a fixed deadline, um, so please be mindful of that. We can't offer extensions. Uh, please do download the terms and conditions document, and you can see a screen grab of that on the left. It's very simple. It takes you through the key stages or the key areas of criteria, eligibility, etc., the countries where you're eligible, uh, eligibility of your organisation, etc., and uh, that will very much help you in the application process. This document should really answer pretty much all of the questions, unless you've got something very unique or very specific to, to your proposal or where, you're, where you operate or which countries you wish to target. What we will be doing, um, uh, we can't develop it today, but it'll be coming in the coming days once we get back to answering the questions, is develop an FAQ page. So where we see common questions that we think will have relevance to, to all applicants, we will be posting these on an FAQ page, and we will look to update this as we get any late questions coming in up to the application deadline of the 22nd to make sure we can share that with, um, with all of you um, that are on the webinar today and for anyone who wishes to um, submit on the application later. So any questions we can't answer on the, on the, on the voice section today, uh, we'll do in follow-up emails and we'll make sure they get posted to the FAQs page. Um, the, the other thing you should look to do is download the recording of this webinar. We'll make the recording of this webinar um, with a full video support for those of you that were saying you had connection issues or were dropping out or the video quality was dropping. We will have a recording of this that should be pretty uh, sharp and, and, and easy to view. And we'll also share a PDF of the slides themselves. So um, hopefully you can match up uh, the questions and the voice to, to the various slides. So you can, you can download that and, and take a look at it offline. And then the last point, which is very key as well, is if you have those questions and you want to pose them to us, uh, we have got a generic inbox. Uh, you can see it there. It's gsmaif at gsma.com. This will be a monitored inbox. Um, and we are asking that you make those submissions uh, now on the 8th of, uh, of May. Um, and then we will hopefully coming back to you on those, 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 those questions where we can answer and we will pose the key ones that we think are relevant to all applicants on an FAQ page. And uh, that remains as a, as a thank you to all of you that have uh, dialed in today. We really think, we or really, really hope uh, that you found the webinar useful. Uh, we'd like to thank you for your time. We'd like to thank you for all of the questions that were posed either in the chat room or those that you wish to, to pose via email. And you can see the email address there on the, on the last slide. And we also uh, posted the, the full URL. So please, uh, when you get time, download the, uh, the access the URL, download the um, term sheet. Uh, we will be posting a recording of this uh, or a link to the recording of this webinar there as well. And we will post the, uh, the PDF of the slides. So you can view those in your own time. As I said, uh, if we can get your questions by the 8th of May, we're targeting to, to capture them all by then. We will post an FAQ and then we will do our best, but we cannot guarantee because it's not a um, mailbox. It's something that gets monitored uh, on occasion. Answer any further questions that come in there in the, in the following days between the 8th and the 22nd. And the 22nd is going to be the, uh, the submission date. So please, everyone, bear that in mind. And we wish you luck and uh, uh, good luck with all the proposals. We're really excited to see what, um, what uh, innovations are out there and what you're, you're, you're willing to share with us. So good luck, everybody. And thanks again for your time.